Uh, my name is Margaret Ann Windsor. Uh, this is my father, the real King Edward VIII. Uh, and here's my uncle George, who became illegal George the Sixth, um, who took down my father, helped take down my father, along with uh, Joe Kennedy, who was ambassador, and the Kennedy brothers. Uh, JFK and Joseph Jr., who flew into there, and I was born in uh, 39, and they kidnapped me in 41, and this is with Roosevelt, my uncle, in 39, the year I was born, and uh, they were planning my kidnapping. They'd already taken down my father, and an, an imposter replaced him and married Wallace Simpson and a 99-year seal was placed on it, and everything in it was a lie about my father, who was married to Claudia Ruth O'Keefe Windsor. And uh, my mom, I have to say this so someone will know her, it's unlike um, Grace Kelly, the American who married Prince Rainier of Monaco, uh, my mother's not even really known. Uh, I have to say my mother's the sister of Georgia O'Keeffe, the artist. And um, she was legally wed to my dad. This whole thing was a lie about Wallace. And um, that was an imposter, a double. And his own brother helped do it. And the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, that are in control of the media. But um, people... Through the years, I mean, I'm 75 years old. They brought me, when they kidnapped me to Moulton, Alabama, and gave me the name of um, Piggy and Dempsey, and I married the Childers. And they, I grew up thinking and being told I was a twin, when in fact both twins, Piggy and Carl, were dead. They were born out of wedlock to Lana Dempsey, and she murdered them. And it gets into, like, proportions of lies and cover-ups that, is borders it really does border on unreal that you can get that many people to lie and be corrupt systematically ongoing um i wrote a book in 77 78 uh, about mind control and patterns and uh how one of the doctors that i worked for uh had done a heart bypass and placed a chip or whatever you want to call it inside and you can um, control one's decision-making. Uh, you can make a person appear to commit suicide or develop cancer and die or appear of natural causes, the death, when in fact it's murder by mind control. Uh, you can make them go out and kill someone else, and thus, whether it's with a knife or it's a mass killing with gun or rifle or whatever, or drive your car into the river and drown. Uh, so anyway, I wrote about that, and Larry Flint was shot uh, in Lawrenceville while I was doing the book, and I'm just showing this. I've been showing the Hustler magazine. It was uh, This was an endorsement, and it was in uh, April uh, issue of 84. Now then, I wanted to focus because I I was telling you I wrote about mind control because the man that shot Larry Flint was under mind control. That was May uh, March the sixth of seventy eight when he shot him in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And I hate to show this room I'm in, but uh, anyway, this is just after I've moved up here to Roanoke. Um, the killings and patterns never stopped. I just never got my book. Published because, quite frankly, I got a letter from the FBI June the 23rd of um, 79, and then April Fool Day of 80, I was still full of antifreeze and should have died. And uh, I survived hell because I got transferred from when I went for a tox screen to see what had been put in me to the emergency room, and they were waiting on me. <laughs> And I was uh, from one place to the other, no uh, lab that I'd gone there for, none of the normal lab work that's required. In fact, I got locked up one to the other across the state line. Finally, I worked for Fred Simpson, the district attorney in 80. Uh, that's uh, Madison County uh, DA's office in Huntsville. And... Um, uh, it, it turns into a fiasco of what can be done to me. And by the way, I passed the background check as 
um, going to work for the DA. But here's some of the murders that after, here at Virginia Tech, I met Roanoke not far, and this is uh, the psychiatrist uh, who did the shootings at Fort Hood. He finished at Georgia, uh, I'm sorry, Virginia Tech. Um, then he went on to medical school somewhere and became a psychiatrist. But anyway, he was born in Benton or Roanoke here. And this is just part of the list of murders that happened here, not just the June or April the 16th of 07. It's not just that. Uh, there's a whole list of murders that happened there and at the University of Virginia that aren't talked about. And by the way, there was a recent one there where the girl was killed, a student, by two other co-eds. And it, it, it's eerie because it's similar to the uh, Kutcher and um, the Amanda Knox uh, thing that, uh, in Italy. I, I don't know. I, ha I really shouldn't say that because I haven't looked at it. But I can just about tell you that it was a mind control murder because it's how it's carried out and everything. But um, I really wanted to focus on this at the moment. Since I've been up here in 06, I have uh, had, when I came up, I had my jobs blocked before I ever came here. I really came here and got off the bus in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, actually, with no place to go, no money, and freezing, and no clothes hardly at all. <clears throat> and a British lady had been on the bus with me, and... Uh, I had gotten off in Abington, quite frankly, because that's as far as my ticket went, and I had to get, um, I had to get it, well, I had to go to the sheriff's office to help, get help with the ticket on the Roanoke in a bigger town, so maybe I had a place to stay. So when I got here, I walked into the uh, bus station. British lady that had been on the bus with me from Nashville told me on the way up, she said, she started talking to me and believe she, <laughs> she was telling the truth. I laugh because there's things I can't uh, put on here. It's the time limits. I can't because of that. But uh, she said my father was still alive, uh, King Edward VIII. The double uh, that married Simpson died, I believe, in 74. And uh, my father was still alive then in um, 86 when I came here and uh, when I came in the door at the bus station in Roanoke she was there waiting for me and she said to me we'll come back and get you here and I went on in the restroom when I came out she was gone but I've seen Brits on the Appalachian Trail when I had to live there freezing and starving just to have a place to be to get uh, off the highway where I could crawl into a tent uh, when I was lucky enough to have one. So uh, this gets into depriving me of even shelters or, uh, I mean, the abuse that was handed out is horrible when I got, I'm allergic, let me say that. I have an immune disorder. I'm allergic to chemicals. And if uh, the only way you can uh, counteract that, there's really no cure, is if it's like your home, your environment, and it's being... Uh, Deliberately, I'll go ahead and say it. I'm, uh, it's got to where my anything I say has to be censored for fear of them handcuffing and locking me up. But uh, the only thing, if where you're living is being like the maintenance or in management, and you name it, uh, can walk in and spray or uh, do something to the air conditioning unit where it's spitting out poison air. Uh, you have to move, obviously. Uh, so through the years, it's taken out my lungs, my liver, my kidneys, you name it. And when you think that uh, Edward Snowden about the NSA, that was just a touch of the iceberg mind control. It's so massive, that's what is the real weapon, and it's who's using it, um, the agency using it. Uh, they've gotten people to do things and they get them to do it by threatening to find something. Uh, everybody's done something, and they'll find it. And the people, it's shocking because I'm getting beat up, and they all know it. Here in Roanoke and the surrounding and Atlanta,